Okay, so today we're going to be tackling a question that a lot of students have been struggling with. So the annoying question is this. An individual with income of 90 consumes only two goods, X and Y. When confronted with prices of 20 and 10 for good X and good Y, he would choose to consume three units of both the goods. Now with an income of 120 and the prices are now 10 and 20 for both goods, However, he will choose to consume 2 units of X and 5 units of Y. Therefore, the consumer cannot be rational. So, we have to prove whether this is true or false and explain why that's the case. To make things easier, let's eliminate all the unnecessary stuff for this question um, by graying them out and let's take a look at only the income levels, um, the price levels and how much the individual is going to consume given the two different scenarios. And of course, the question of, you know, um, can I prove whether this individual is rational or not? So how you should approach this question is that you have to understand in consumer theory, it's all about choices. And in this case, it's about the consumer making a choice between an initial bundle and a new bundle. So what this question is trying to ask you is this. Is the new bundle chosen by the consumer a rational decision or not? And once you understand that consumer theory is about choices, you can then phrase this question into just three simple portions. A before situation, an after situation, and then analyze whether his behavior is rational or not. That's it. But before we delve into the question, I just want to talk about what exactly rationality means. A lot of students don't seem to understand what the word rational means. So rationality is basically a consumer maximizing his utility with any budget constraint that he faces. So let me give you an example that you can use in the context of this question. Let's say that an individual begins with a situation like this. So as you can see, by having his indifference curve tangent to the budget line, this individual is maximizing his utility given that his income is at I0, the price of X and Y is at PX0 and PY0. So now I'm going to change things up and I'm going to change the income and the prices so that he gets a new budget constraint that looks like this. So the black budget line is of no more. We are now focusing on the blue budget line, which is the new one, because that's the new situation now, right? The new prices and the new income. So how would this individual maximize his utility now? Well, it's quite simple, right? He's going to change his bundle of X and Y from A to B. And by moving the point B, he's actually shifting his indifference curve upwards to the upper right-hand corner of the graph. His indifference curve is now tangent to the new budget line, which is what you know as maximizing his utility, right? So when this individual maximizes his utility, so he's pretty normal, right? Um, so what we say is that this individual is rational because he is maximizing his utility. So let's look at a case whereby this individual might be a complete retard. So instead of going to B, he goes to point C. So I think it's really easy for you to see that going to point C is completely retarded because he's not maximizing his utility, right? The indifference curve is not tangent to the budget constraint. So if he's at point C, this guy is a retard, um, he's irrational because he's not maximizing his utility. So now that you understand what is rationality and what it means to be rational, let's go back to the question. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw the before situation onto a graph. Basically, we're going to be drawing the budget constraint and this can be easily done by identifying what are the vertical and horizontal intercepts. So that's really easy. Basically, the intercepts of both axes represent the real income in terms of good X and good Y. So to find the intercept for the horizontal axis, you just have to take the income divided by the price of X, which is 90 over 20, you get 4.5. You do the same for the Y intercept and you're going to get 9. So on the graph, it's going to look just like this. And to give you a clearer picture on how I got these numbers, um, basically here they are. Okay, so most of you would probably have reached this point. Um, then what you want to do is to add on your beloved indifference curve um, to show that the individual is initially maximizing his utility by being at point A. And you're going to draw it in such a way that the indifference curve is tangent to the initial budget constraint. 
Okay, so now that we have the before situation sorted out, let's go to the after situation. So let's just do the same thing and look for the um, vertical and horizontal intercepts. So we can see here that it is 12 and 6 respectively for the x and y axis. So now let's go back to the graph and plot out um, 6 and 12 on the graph as you can see here in blue. So great, we can now draw our after scenario budget constraint. But wait. Um, where does the new budget constraint intersect the old one? Is it going to be here or here? This is really important because although this thing is not drawn to scale, we've got to make sure that, you know, the positions of the intersections is accurate, right? So, shit, how do we determine where the two budget lines are going to intersect? Well, it's really easy. You just have to start by coming up with a mathematical formula to represent both of the budget lines. So here are the equations to represent both of the budget lines. Um, notice that the whole number in front of x has to be negative because it's downward sloping. Um, and the 9 and the 6 are basically your intercepts on the y-axis for both of the uh, budget, con budget constraints. So what you want to do now is to equate both of the equations um, since y equals to y and you solve for one of the variables first which is x, right? Then you take x and you put it into you know, any of the budget line equations and you're going to find y. So now you know that the new budget line is going to intersect the old budget line at x equals to 2 and y equals to 5. So now if you look at the graph, I can plot out exactly where the new budget line is going to intersect the old one. Now I can finally join the new budget constraint. Oh, I got to shift the 6 up a little bit there. And now I'm just going to grey out the old budget line so that we can see exactly what's going on here. So now, to figure out whether the consumer is rational or not, we need to see what his new choice of a bundle is going to be. So let's go back to the question. And from the question, we can see that his new bundle of x and y is going to be 2 and 5. Oh, hey, it happens to be the point where the new and the old budget line is going to intercept. So I'm just going to put point B over there. Okay, so this is the part where you have to pay really close attention to. By moving from point A to point B, how does the indifference curve move? Well, it's going to move this way. It actually moved downwards, right? So what can you tell me about this individual? Well, I can say that he's completely retarded. He is a completely retarded piece of shit because he has just moved to a point where he is not maximizing his utility. Well, it's really easy to see that he's not maximizing his utility because his indifference curve here is not tangent to the new budget line. So now, if you look closely at the blue lines, you can see that there is actually a point where he can maximize his utility. And that point is over here. You see, by moving on to point B, he is maximizing his utility because his indifference curve here over at point B is tangent to the new budget constraint. But instead of choosing this bundle, he chose this bundle instead. And that's why this consumer is retarded, uh, I mean irrational, right? So you go back to the question and now you can finally answer it. The consumer is not rational and that is completely true. And that is due to the reasons that I've explained in this video to this really, really annoying question.